It was a strange place where one was conscious of his own unconsciousness, a direct contradiction and something impossible to conceive of. The fabric of reality was built on Kay's unconscious, and his being had broken into many parts. Kay, the boy we know, moved not as a unified whole, but as distinct and individual entities, five to be exact, his persona, self, anima, ego, and shadow. They all existed individually with their own thoughts, desires, and bodies, all brought to light during the fall. By the time he had reached the ground, K was no longer K. He existed as each of these different parts simultaneously, none of the parts more alike him than the others. Now the five of them, anima, ego, persona, self, and shadow, were alive and piled atop one another at the bottom of the cliff in a heap of bodies. The landscape they lay upon was expansive and red and dusty and akin to a hazy, forgotten Mars. Shadow and Ego were first to push their way out from underneath the bodies. The two stood next to each other. Shadow was masked and wore all black. He was a twisted character most of us wouldn't want to believe in. He embodies all of your darkest thoughts, and if you ever saw him, he would make you shudder. Maybe you would even see your own vileness in him. This is the character I've chosen to introduce first, as he is most important to watch out for. Standing tall next to Shadow is Ego. Think of this man who survives on the validation of others. Sensual pleasures are constantly in abundance around him, and if they were not, for even the slightest second, he would collapse, because nothing holds him up. He is supremely confident and uses everything and everyone as a tool. He is fragile. The most minute, disapproving glance from a superior would shatter him. A sly remark from a friend, or an offhand comment from a significant other, a nail through Ego's heart. Where's Shadow going? He's running off. Then another character in the cast of K popped out of the pile. Persona, the image of yourself you show off to the world, or maybe more naturally, the image in which the world sees you. Obviously, a stranger cannot really know you. You are seen as a banker, a fisherman, or a priest. They see a caricature of your true self, just like you see only the personas of everyone else, the most superficial manifestation of the individual. Most people spend a lot of time tending to their personas. It is most important because it is your reputation, it is the role you play in society. Barely it is the least important aspect of yourself because persona brings nothing new to the table. Now let us meet Anima, finally a woman. Anima is the feminine side of man. The animus would be mentioned in our place if K were a woman. The Anima is quite nice, splendid and cultured, yet annoying at times. She is a mother above all else, especially in the way she puts others before herself. Her children are her life's work so that their success is reflective of her character. She has been oppressed, yet is growing stronger and brighter with each passing day. She uses strategy, intelligence, and drama to advance her goals, and those goals are reasonable. The anima is soft-spoken, easygoing, and enjoyable to spend time with. Too much time spent with her, and you will receive her anxieties. She is frail, delightful, and rich in so many ways. Now please, the moment you have all been waiting for, welcome the Superman. Welcome the self. Self is the ideal, Kay's ideal, the embodiment of all things that matter and all things one strives to be. Self is who you are working towards. Self is the man on top of the mountain. It is difficult to see self at this moment. There is a glowing aura around him. He floats slightly above the ground. He is a demigod among mortals. He is, he is Alexei Karamazov. He is Zarathustra. He is Kay. He is who you want to spend every day with for your mere being near him will make you better. I can't tell if he has a beard or is clean shaven. I can't tell you if he dresses in finery or rags. He is the ocean and the wind. He has infinite love for all. Standing in front of us, we have persona, self, anima, and ego. Where is shadow gone? Each a complete manifestation of K, each equally just in calling themselves K, and all equally wrong. When we look at them, we look at a divided K. Remember also that we are in a fold of K's unconsciousness, a very strange place. A place where no one truly ventures. Though I must warn you, this place is inhabited. Creatures live in tribes. Conflict over resources is common. The most violent conflicts were the water wars. Disputes over who had access to the few oases in the Red Desert. Conflicts escalated into a series of very bloody wars, and so the story goes that the desert was stained red by blood. There were sandstorms, scorpions, and all the other things you would expect to find in a desert, yet among them all, there were a few great abnormalities. For instance, there were these myths that everyone had heard about. 
Supposedly, there lived an old man who had survived on his own since the desert was, no was nothing but a grain of sand. However, our travelers had never heard any of these stories. They were tourists dropping in on some strange place with no instruction and no apparent mission. They actually sat around for a while and kicked rocks before leaving their fallen place. They started to wander the desert in search of... And now they traversed sand dunes that towered like large buildings. Shadows were cast on the landscape and the sun beat down viciously upon their backs. Finally, after much walking, our band came upon an old man sitting in a rocking chair on the porch of a tiny house made from ill-fitting wood boards. The house appeared to have just a single room. The old man did not trouble himself at the sight of the travelers and continued rocking. Self and Anima sat down in front of the rocking chair. On the small steps that led up to the tiny house, trying to soak in the pure energy evidently radiating from the man. Ego walked around the house, inspecting all its angles and doing as he pleased, very pleased with himself. Persona stood a few meters from the house and looked around as if, as if someone at any moment might give him a hard slap on the back. What follows is the conversation between self and the old wise man. Have you been here alone all these years? asked self. I was abandoned here before one begins to form memories. All I've ever known is isolation, replied the old man. Only the most holy of men, if any, have been alone for as long as you have, said Self in astonishment. I like to be alone too. The chaos of the world is too much. I just don't know many people, the old man said somewhat sadly and most reflectively. Oh, well, they are very different. Some are loud and take yard-long strides when they walk. Some are quiet and only speak when spoken to. It's very strange, however, because you would expect to be able to categorize them without much trouble, but you can't. I would expect that from what I know about myself. What do you know about yourself? Despite all this time alone, I still know very little and nothing with certainty. That surprised itself. He felt like he knew himself exhaustively, yet if this man did not, then maybe he didn't either. I can tell you a few things that I think I know. Suffering. I've known certain things since I was a boy and still find myself forgetting them. I suffer unnecessarily by living in my past memories. I worry about the future and do not realize I am missing the moment right in front of me. I try to take the middle way, neither in starvation nor excess, and have succeeded in finding God in everything. The world is what you think it is. You are nothing less than nothing. You are the scum on the bottom of nothing's shoe. Yet you are God. You are life itself. You are the totality of everything that has ever come before you and the father of everything that will ever come after you and you will die and everyone will eventually forget about you the old man paused for a moment self you need to become one with your friends do you understand i do then come here kneel by my feet self did as he was told he took off his jacket and placed it in front of the rocking chair he placed his knees upon the fabric and bowed low in front of the old man he did not know what to expect. His fall, his long walk across the sand, and his conversation with the holy man, man, that was all he could remember. Some small part of him remembered being a boy, but that was somewhere far off and inaccessible. So he thought not of himself, but of the words the old man had said. The holy man placed his three middle fingers on the forehead of the kneeling man and uttered a short few phrases. The truth exists fully within all of us, though only once whole. Spend your life looking inward and become one with your soul. You now begin the individuation process so you can attain your holy goal. With these final words, a wave washed over self. He felt every atom inside his body. He felt the blood moving and the air in his lungs. The other stared at the scene in amazement. Starting from the point where the old man had touched self's forehead, his body began to disintegrate. The particles floated up into the air and spiraled like a tornado above what was left of the kneeling self. He was the remains of a marble statue worn away by rain. Soon his entire body had disintegrated and swirled above the others. In a rapid movement, the spinning dust of self dove at anima, ego, and persona. They had no time to react and were knocked down by the punch of the energy. When the dust cleared and things were visible again, self had disappeared. They looked around in confusion for a moment but soon realized that the soul of self was now a part of each of them. So self had dissolved and entered and been integrated with each of them. They could all feel the change. It was an indescribable feeling. Have you ever lost a loved one? Well, then you know that we live in honor of the people that we have lost.
It was like this for anima, ego, shadow, and persona. They lived in honor of self. They carried self with them, like Robert Jordan implored Maria to. I am with you. I am with you. Much farther into the desert, a band of travelers came across a large cauldron. None of them knew this, but many different creatures of Kay's unconsciousness had came across this large golden tub before. Some had tried to enter, but none were able to. There seemed to be a magnetic repulsion that prevented anyone from entering. The tub had actually become quite famous in the realm, so that creatures would regularly go to test if they would be able to enter, though none of them had been able to. Have you taken the pilgrimage to Mecca? The most sacred place on earth, according to Islam, is the Kebab in the great mosque of Mecca. It houses an ancient meteorite that symbolizes God's covenant with Abraham and Ishmael. Thousands of Muslims circle the stone at once, creating an orgy of spiritual observation and connection. This is the most sacred moment for millions and millions of people. The following very closely mimicked that scene. Persona, a loud, deep voice rang out. Persona stood dead in his tracks. He crimsoned, nearing a purple shade as the voice continued. Enter the pool. We have waited a long time for you and hope to put an end to all this nonsense. You will enter and leave only that which is true. Persona, like a marionette, walked towards the cauldron as the voice commanded. The two travelers stared onward in amazement, watching Persona walk towards the golden tub. It was made entirely of gold, engraved with elaborate and, de and detailed religious art, with small sparkling gemstones placed evenly atop the entire rim. The tub sat above a raging fire. The bottom glowed red with heat. The water in the tub boiled and bashed violently, all seen from the top of the set of stairs that led up to the rim of the small pool. Apparently, word had gotten out about the mysterious man who was now approaching the stairs of the sacred tub, which had for so long gone unclimbed. It was not as if one person showed up, then another, then the entire crowd showed up. It was as if everyone found out about the scene at exactly the same time and had all rushed to secure close admission to the long prophesized performance. Thousands of creatures, some hideous with long snouts and some majestical and floating, were in attendance. A horse with a pair of golden wings and a purple being in the shape of a cylinder with a, with a radius of a yard and a height of two with no eyes and no ears stood next to each other. Look at Persona, he's on the edge. Persona stood tall at the top of the stairs, high above even the most long necked of creatures. He looked out into the crowd and took the anger and resentment in the air and sent it back as love. He loved the world now. He loved the world not as a reflection of others, but as himself. Everyone in the audience was stunned by the scene before them. Is he really going to jump, asked one? Of course not, inserted another. I hope he does, chimed softly a young creature. If he does, I will finally believe in God. Persona stood at the top of the stairs and peered down into the boiling water. In his last moments, Persona did not scream out. He acted honorably, knowing the job to be done. He looked straight ahead and launched himself off the high platform, plunging himself into the burning cauldron. Anima and Ego fell to their knees. They were suffocated by indescribable pain. They felt the burning water as if they too were in the cauldron. The four travelers now experienced the same horrible pain as each other, though only Ego, Anima, and Shadow had bodies to account for. The onlookers could not look away. Some wept, some screamed, all ran from the tub. The stampede rushed away like an outgoing tide. In the chaos after the death, a baby was left nearby. A baby girl with dark tufts of hair pulled into two flowing strands. Anima picked up the child and looked into her small brown eyes. The baby girl reached and made a fist near the cheek of Anima. When no one came for her, Anima picked up the girl and called her Nina, the prettiest name that she could think of for the prettiest thing her eyes had ever seen. Anima experienced bouts of extreme hydration and hallucination as she walked deeper into the desert. She fell into a scene that repeated indefinitely, one of unimaginable horror, one that today I cannot bring myself to describe. What came at the end of this eternal damnation was the disintegration of her soul. Anima died and ego felt their souls solidify. Anima, Anima joined self and persona in the soul of ego, continuing on as a creature very much transformed. Ego came upon a slow-moving river. The water was reflective, soft, and still. Ego was proud, for no preparations had been made at the onset, 
and he shone now realizing that he was the only one still standing. He stared at his reflection in the still river and saw only his reflection, though tadpoles swam on all sides. Behind a dune, Shadow crawled out. Shadow saw Ego and decided to play a nasty trick on him. He ran up behind him and kicked him as hard as he could into the river. Ego tried to cling to the sides but could not. The river bashed violently against itself and turned into a monstrous wave. It peaked higher than the tallest dune, higher than the tallest mountain, and crashed back into the earth like a tsunami. The flood held Ego and Shadow under for a long time, but the water eventually sunk into the sand. The bodies of Shadow and Ego fell at a, at a lone acacia tree a far ways off. The two beings were diametrically opposed. The two bodies rose from their seats as the sound of a low rumble came rolling across the desert. The bellowing grew louder and the sky darkened. Ego grabbed Shadow and screamed in his face, We see you! We see you! You no longer have to hide from us! And falling silent, standing in horror, a dragon burst through the clouds. Fifty feet long with a wing wingspan of forty, black with impenetrable skin and razor-sharp talons and teeth, the dragon swooped low to the earth, fanning its wings and gliding close to the desert floor. The dragon roared so that the fabric of Kay's entire subconscious shook. The mighty beast dove at our travelers, but they flew in opposite directions and sent the dragon flying past them both. In an attempt, the four travelers and one, talking through Ego, took hold of Shadow and said to him, Shadow, we see you. We acknowledge that you exist. We acknowledge your power. Please become one of us. As if in answer, the body of Shadow was absorbed through Ego's outstretched hands. At this moment, our travelers were at last brought completely together. They looked like something entirely and perfectly whole, a being who embodied an individualized K. Without saying a word, our whole boy spoke to the dragon. Land dragon, speak with me. Our traveler reached out and cut off his right hand at the wrist. In admiration and out of great respect, the dragon did the same. They traded hands and mended their lacerations by attaching each other's ends. The smelling salts from Dr. Vygotsky struck at exactly this moment, jolting Kay upright in the room with his family and the doctor, and he could see everything clearly now.